Boo, I fucking got you. You didn't even know I was here, bitch. Oh, shit. Where'd you come from? I scared him. What's up, you sloppy slurpers? Welcome to the Dunky Grunk Show. I'm Grunk. I'm Dunk. So today, we are looking at cringy moments that you've experienced personally. Wow. Wow. That sure is cringy. That was, ooh, that made me go, uh, Oh, oh, I'm, uh, I'm cringy. Ah. Oh, it hurts. All right, let's get right into this. First one comes from your boy, Anthony Kapakakaki. Oh, he's our top fan. <laughs> yes, that's top fan. <laughs> you hear that, Tony? You're a fucking top fan, dude. Uh, he says, some kid proposed to his girlfriend in the pit at our show in St. Louis. He was the singer of one of the bands. He went in the pit and was caressing her face and singing to her. And then popped the question right there at a local show. I mean... To each his own, you know? Yeah, to, to each his to own. what makes you happy. They had good barbecue there, though. So, <laughs> <laughs> so they that. can do whatever the yeah, fuck they, can, they want. Their excuse for the one. Their for barbecue the was legit. Yeah. That is true. I didn't see that. But yeah, I, didn't I don't know if this either. is the was, same kid. I don't know if this is the same kid or the same night. It all got blurred together. But there was a kid who came up to me at some show on tour and said, I want to propose to my girlfriend. Will you do it for me? What? Yeah. He asked you. To he do asked it? me I don't think to ask way. her, "Hey, will you marry Wait, what? him?" What? And I was like, "No." Yeah, what the fuck? I'm not doing that. <laughs> like, <laughs> like what if There's no way I'm doing what that. What a thing to like experience. What if she said no for you to get I like know. rejected by someone you were like, trying know, to get? Right? With? <laughs> what a weird situation to be It's like, in. uh, could he not ask me himself? <laughs> yeah, like <laughs> Way to make her feel special. You yeah, exactly. Stop. Megan Rachel Friel says, I was walking behind two people I thought I knew after finishing college. So I snuck up behind them, went behind the, between them, and put my arms around them. <laughs> I'd never seen them in my life, but instead of letting go, I decided to roll with it and just walk with them, asking them about their day, like I meant to do it. When I said bye, with a cool guy finger point and was out of eyesight, I crumbled into a heap of self-loathing. Dude. Have you ever done that? Uh, I definitely, I, oh yeah, I've definitely tried to commit to like, I wasn't fucking stupid. <laughs> yeah. You're stupid. <laughs> right. You just mistake somebody for somebody Dude, else and I, do some shit. I did that in a, in a dangerous scenario. I was riding my bike uh, just on the street one day. Mm -hmm. Not like in the center. I was on the side of the road. But I saw a car coming up and I thought it was my mom's. It was like a red Mustang. Oh so, no. So I rode in the street like playing chicken with her and I was oh, heading right no. towards the car. And then right at the last second I like away and then I fucking had made eye contact with this chick and she was like what are you doing? Oh, and I was no. like oh that's for sure not my mom. <laughs> <laughs> this is like oh sorry lady she probably was just like this fucking asshole kid had a death wish and was fucking killed himself. <laughs> mom will never guess what happened to me today. <laughs> God that's funny. I get home she's like yeah I was letting somebody borrow my car. And she's like, oh. Uh -oh. <laughs> Jackie Hulse says right after high school I was house sitting for a co-worker had a couple friends over to chill. Dude spent the whole night pathetically begging my friend to sleep with him. She turned him down over and over again. After she passed out, he and I are outside smoking. He says, well, since I couldn't make it with her, how about you? You want to fuck around? I kicked him the fuck out. What a, what a, like a, a thought process. Of just right. like, you want to have sex? No. All right. No, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, what like, about, what about now? No? All right, I'm going, I'm going to bed. Like, fuck. All right, now what? <laughs> Just looking around the room. Like, you, 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 all the things I just said, but now you. But you thoughts. Oh man, this is the most primitive. Like I'm not even trying. Oh, it's, anymore. oh, it's the worst. There was there was this kid in my old uh, youth group who literally the first day of youth group went to every single girl and asked them out at the youth group the same night. Oh my god. The same night, oh they God. all said no. Yeah, because he just, they just, just like, met him. Like. Right. It was the weirdest thing. Riley Hunt Brown. In the third grade, we were forced to play kickball. And at one of the tournaments, this what a thing to be Wait, forced to do. Forced, forced, forced to play kickball. doesn't like kickball? Plus. And at one of the tournaments, this kid got up to the plate and said, watch this, I'm going to do something oh, awesome. No. He then kicked the ball, ran to first base, and proceeded to shit his pants <laughs> on first base. <laughs> Unfortunately, nobody <laughs> noticed until it was too late as the next kid kicked the ball. The base shitter ran to second base 
And when the kid got to first base, he slipped in the first kid's shit. To this day, I still don't know why he did it, but it was easily the grossest slash cringiest thing I've ever seen. So the seen. dude shit on purpose and then just was like... Because he, I assume, he kept playing. He, yeah, he, he said, like, watch this, I'm gonna do something awesome. Yeah, so, but like nobody noticed. Yeah. <laughs> 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 like, you, maybe, have, you have the goal to be like, all right, dude, I'm gonna shit myself for a joke. And nobody sees it. <laughs> <laughs> what an unfortunate <laughs> moment for this kid. It's <laughs> the funniest thing I've ever heard. <laughs> what a. Uh, uh, <laughs> I think we broke him up. It's just so funny to think about it, like, his mind after that of, like, everyone, <laughs> that dude slipping in his shit, he's like, who fucking shit on the base? And then it became less about, like, have you ever done that? Like, I've definitely done this thing where, like, somebody was, like, looking out of the room and I was waiting for him to look at me, so I was, like, pretending to jerk off, and then they didn't look, so then, now I'm just a guy doing this. <laughs> like, so how long do I do it before I have to stop? So that's what this was like for this kid, where he, like, somebody walked in and saw me stopping, and so then they were just like, were you just, just like, pretending to jerk off? I'm like, no, I was doing a joke, but you caught me doing it. So for this guy, he's like, you just shit your pants. He's like, no, I was trying to be funny. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's move on. Oh, that was a good one. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Will Dingman says, What? One night back in high school, I was at a party. I got drunk as hell, had a great time. My buddy and I were on our way out of the party, walking down the driveway. I look over to the side of the house because I thought I heard an animal rustling around beside the trash bin. Turns out it was a chick sitting on the trash bin getting eaten out by some dude. She puked all over his head. He realized this and then proceeded to eat her out anyway. Do you know what the worst part about that is? Is that it, like, there's no way that puke didn't get oh, yeah. on, on her pussy. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, at that point, so that dude was fucking eating throw up oh, out yeah. of a drunk chick's vagina. I mean, yeah. Well, I've done some questionable things when I was drunk, but never, dude, never yeah. that questionable. I mean, yeah, come on. Like, you're gonna spill a can of, of beef stew on your girl and keep eating. <laughs> Uh, Andrew Farr. Well, one time I was at a friend's house and he had some pretty bad road rash on his leg and he peeled off the scab. Then I said, it kind of looked like beef jerky and he got the bright idea to try and get his drunk uncle to eat it. So he went up to his half sleeping drunk uncle and asked if he wanted some jerky. His uncle grabbed it and ate it. <coughs> the cringy part is he asked for more. <laughs> right? Right? <laughs> you don't eat a scab and say that was good jerky. I don't care how tired you are. What flavor was it? Boy? Like, what do you mean? I understand it's like bloody and probably got hair in it and like shirt fabric. Dude, scabs are like fragile and brittle. What, what jerky? Like, mm. yeah, it's like. What flavor was it? <laughs> Boy! <laughs> Boy, flavor. <laughs> oh my fucking. That's disgusting. <laughs> okay, yeah, some of these are just really gross, fucking but also scabby, just like. Dude. Yeah, it's physically uh, cringing. It's not even like, oh, I'm cringing. It's just yeah. like literally like. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it's good. William R. Kraft. So, this kid I used to work with was crushing hard on one of the girls on our team. He would constantly tell me how into her he was. Well, when she broke up with her boyfriend, he immediately tried to ask her out. And he did this by coming in on his day off in a tux, escorted by his mother. His mother then told this girl how madly in love with her he was. This is all going down in front of the rest of us on the team. To this day, I still have the hair on the back of my neck stand when I talk about it. When she turned him down, he ran out of the store sobbing and never came back to work. Your fucking mother. You had your mother. You're wearing a tux. I, I have to see, like, I'm trying to see this. He's in a tux and his mother approaches this woman and says, my son is in love with you. Will you be with him? And he's just like, yep. I sure am. Yep, sure am, sure am. Oh my God. I, I would have I had to like 
nope, I can't yeah. watch this happen. Like, that's, I could not have watched that happen. Dude, yeah. Like, that's I, really bad. I think I'm a nice person, but I think if I saw that in person, I would for sure laugh out loud. Yo, like, for uh, sure. Are you fucking kidding me? You got your mom at profess your feelings? That's what bad. What the fuck? That's yeah, bad. Dude. Yeah, I would never come back to work either. Fuck that. Seriously. I'd quit and move. I'd change my name. I'd grow a beard. I'd fucking <laughs> kill my parents. I'd, like, I'd burn my identity. Like, burn your identity. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. All right. Taylor McKee. In grade nine, I dated one of my best friends. Realized a week or two in that we were better off as friends. Decided on the day I was going to end things that I would wait until the end of our lunch break so there was only one class left before we all had to go home. Pro move. 20 minutes before lunch was over, my other friend sits down next to us and says, So, have you two broken up yet? I felt bad. I was so stunned I oh couldn't even get a word out before he walked away. All the other buddy had to say was, Shit, oops. We are still best friends to this day, but there was definitely an awkward month or so back in 2010 after that. That's yeah. rough. Dude, I fucking hate friends like that. Right. It's like, that was the reason. Like, yeah. you, like, what are the, like, why would you even say that after? Like, if they didn't exactly. break up. Like, so you guys fucking break up yet or what's up? It's like, yeah, I'm, like, that's not a hard thing. And right. Like, and you genuinely think if they broke up that they would be together right now at this table? Yeah. That was on purpose. You're an asshole. Yeah, exactly. Uh, Patrick Pog. I saw about three real life brownies. Get genuinely upset because Walmart had ran out of some My Little Pony toy. They started Ooh. crying what? because it was the only Walmart in about 40 miles and they weren't getting any more in for a few weeks. They even threatened the store manager with violence when he confronted them and asked them to leave. I thought My Little Ponies were supposed to be like cute and cuddly and nice and... Yeah, but the brony fandom. <clears throat> if you stop a man from looking at a prim little horse... <laughs> and filling up his cum jar one more level, you're asking for a bad time. <laughs> Never stand like between <laughs> a group of sexually frustrated men that jerk off to cute little ponies. It's Never stand in their way. Oh, you will no. get teared on. <laughs> Daniel Stevens. I was at a strip club in Dallas. I walked outside for some much needed fresh air and had two really old women in a white car ask me if I had a big dick. Told them they would never know. Then, a guy came flying out of the club and hopped in the back seat of the old lady's car, and the old-ass passenger hopped in back with him and proceeded to bang like there's no tomorrow. If there was a god, the windows would have been tinted. There was no god that night. I just wanted to smoke. That's a weird situation. Yeah, I don't, I don't know, know that's if that's cringy. cringy. That's just like... Yeah, yeah. It's kind of... Yeah, it's more so just like a tight story of just like... <laughs> Yeah, these little ladies tried to fuck me, and then some dude actually flew out of the store. Like, like he was magnetized. Like Superman, by, like, just like, he heard big dick, and his dick actually went <laughs> <laughs> like <laughs> threw him from the store and was magnetized into the this. 1920s through the layers of old woman pussy. <laughs> He's trying to play a, a claw game. He's trying to oh my God. get old newspapers from her <laughs> his dick. Ben Souter. Another good one was when I got on the subway after work around 2 a.m. This dude was dressed in full drag, holding a mannequin torso that was also all dolled up in drag and had a wig on. Mm -hmm. I had a few drinks, so I wasn't even trying to look away. I just watched this dude as he had a full conversation with the said mannequin and would occasionally make out with it as if it was his significant other. At some point, he casually got off at a stop as if nothing was unusual with this behavior and went about his night. I wish them the best of luck. Cute couple. Dude, living, living his best life. I, I no, no cares in the world. He's, he's, he found love. He doesn't care if anyone disapproves right. of his love. I was kind of hoping when we were in New York on the subways we would have saw some weird shit, but we really never did. Yeah, I mean, New York was just, you know, just, it was more so just rude people yeah. rather than crazy shit. Yeah. There was one guy that was just like laughing hysterically to himself. Remember that? I don't. Sitting next to that woman, and then he got up and laughed. Oh and yeah, we were, that was pretty funny. And we were all just like, okay, yeah. like he, I don't know what he was doing. <laughs> no, it was but. the best thing. It was the stranger on the thing, and yeah, this this like crazy guy was like sitting next to her, laughing hysterically, and then he got up and got off, and Tony went and sat down next to her and sat there for a second, and then he went. <laughs> like right next to her, like pretending to also be crazy. <laughs> I, was, I just thought it was a really funny right. moment. Just everyone, like everyone around the area, was like laughing. We're like, yeah. okay, we all thought that was funny. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's really good. This one, 
I have so many questions. I have one big question. It's a good story, but I don't get it. Okay. I was having sex with my now ex, and I had just moved into the dorms at my college. Well, her ass was in the air, and suddenly the door opens slightly, and I look behind her. I see someone peeking in. Then I hear, what the fuck? And he leaves. You following? Wait. Wait, her ass was in the air. Yes. So he was fucking her doggy style. Yes. Her, but then behind here's her. Here's the door open. Yeah, door. Someone peeking in. So he's this way, looking at the door. Yes. Okay, and her head's then down that way. Someone peeking yeah. in, hears what the fuck. Right. Door slams, well, right? Well, when did he see them? So I go outside and look. The shower turns on. I'm waiting outside the bathroom, and finally he comes out, sees me, and I could immediately tell it was him. Who? What are you, what are you talking about? Who was it? The, you, the person that you saw? Yeah, I, but who? Like, yeah, wait. I don't, I just, I'm so confused by this. Like, I want to know. It doesn't make sense to me. So I go outside and look, the shower turns on. I'm waiting outside the bathroom. Finally, he comes out, sees me, and I can immediately tell it was him. Who? I don't get it. Like, her roommate? Like, what? I, it, yeah, I don't know. What's the reveal of I, this? No, like, is, what's, exactly. Is, is the reveal that you confronted the guy that you saw see you fucking? Or is it that the person is supposed to be of importance? Because you left that out, if that's what you meant. I know, because it's yeah. not much Corey of a reveal. Corey Smith, what, let us know. Let us know. What are you talking know. about? Who walked in? Who's this mystery person? Exactly. We need to know the mystery, yeah. man. Don't just say their name. What relevance did they have to the scenario? Yes. Jake Calligan says, I saw my ex attempting to use toilet paper when we were camping, only to find out later the toilet paper had already been used. She was just using her hand? She was using used toilet paper. Oh, gross. <laughs> Jesus Christ. How would you not know? Yeah, like, how, yeah, like how do you... It's no longer on the roll. I mean, it's a good indicator of that. I don't know. Yeah, you just grab, like, a, just go into the dirty diaper bin and just, like... <laughs> This one's the least bit dirty. I'll take I'm this one. I'm just gonna one. use the other side of the shit. Like, I didn't. It's not. Touching I'm not me. a monster. Yeah. Desi Nicole. I took my little sisters to the mall once to see a movie. We arrived a bit too early, so they decided they wanted to go into Hot Topic. There was a couple there, and just by looking at them, I cringed by the way they dressed. Then I hear the girl say, "Rar," mm. and the boy goes, "Ah, oh, don't do that. It scares me." I gave my sisters a few bucks and walked the hell out of the store. Oh. <laughs> oh. Oh. oh, no. Oh, he did it. He did it. Now you're all scary. Oh, fuck. Oh, no. Gotta go. Oh, I'll go. Oh, no. Oh no, he said wrong. I said it's scared. Don't do that. It's scared. No, no. Oh. <laughs> I've had nightmares about seeing that person. I don't know how I would react as an adult to see a grown a, a, a uh, an IRL raw. I've never seen it. Like I know it's like the MySpace scene thing, but to to in actual life see somebody say "rar," I think the rebuttal is even and better. That, yeah, that's the worst part. Don't do that. Seeing somebody it go "rar" and they're like, "Oh, baby, what scares me?" And then he probably goes, <laughs> like nuzzles her. <laughs> All right, yeah, a couple more. <laughs> Hugh Spring. So I'm walking upstairs in a hotel in Spain when I was younger. A young girl trips up the stairs in front of me. Before I can help her up, a lady that's next to me tries to do so herself. In her attempt to help, this girl has quite badly smacked her teeth and face on a step, by the way. Oh. She basically half pulls the girl back up and lets go to see her fall the rest of the way down the stairs. Oh Unable to process what she had just done, she simply oh turns God. and walks away. You just murdered this poor child. I, just, I always love that, like, there's so many stories like that where something happened and you're like, okay, we can fix this. And then some person is yeah. like, this is my situation. And they just right. ruin everything. Just sends oh her down. Oh, God. She's on her face, too. Last one. Andrew Rutledge. There was this kid named James I went to school with for probably four months. He was a storyteller. And, of course, they were all lies. Can among you? He told stories about how he was locked in his basement for 12 years, shot his own dad with a shotgun, 
Hunted bears using a sniper that could scope up to 1,000 miles <laughs> away. <laughs> Hell yeah. The man. best story he ever told us, though, was when he drove his Ferrari 300 miles in the desert, 300 miles per hour in the desert, jumped out, pulled the pin of a grenade, threw it into the window of the car in midair, landed perfectly on his feet, and watched the Ferrari blow up. Have you ever known somebody that has just said stories that yeah. are just so, like, mm -hmm. who the fuck do you think you're telling these yeah. stories to? I, yeah, there's one guy like, specifically that I know that when I first met him, he, I was in seventh grade. That's fucking, yeah, that's, that's extreme. But this kid was up there. He was, like, met him for the first time in seventh grade, and he told me that him and his dad were, like, secret special ops agents and that they were only going to be there for, like, a month because they were doing, like, a job where they had to assassinate some guy that was like killing people and they knew who he was it was like like straight out of a movie basically yeah. and it was just like what do you why you, are you know what's really sad about that about it. what's really sad about that is the kid probably moves from town to town all the time because either he has sketchy parents or like military or something so he just has started fabricating stories Dude, so when he does leave people are like uh, oh i wonder if he like, actually, actually uh, CIA. yeah see that's what i initially thought but he he, he still lives here like, oh, really? since that story okay yeah, gotcha like, he may have moved from somewhere, but yeah, he like came to the school and was like, I'm gonna just fucking create yeah. a new identity. Right. But he's also this tiny, like he was like, you know, four foot something. So yeah. he was like, you're, I don't believe you that right. you're an assassin. Exactly. Like, yeah, but he would do that shit all the time where he'd be the type of person that you'd be like, hey, you know about fly fishing, right? You'd be like, yeah, I go fly fishing every weekend with my dad. Right, <laughs> just something yeah. like that. You're like, what are you lying about that <laughs> right. for? It just like, relates to everything. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, uh, cringy moment, your biggest cringy moment you've ever witnessed in real life. Do you have one that um, you can think of? Fuck, I, I have one for me that was pretty bad. Yeah? Yeah. Let's hear it. There was one I, uh, I had asked this girl to go to a dance with me. And then when I got to the dance, she didn't want, like, anything to do with me. and was just hanging out with her friends. And my, uh, my mom had, like, saved up money to get... Uh, like school like pictures done uh -huh. like at the dance thing with her and then I got there and I like told her about it and then she just like bailed on me and oh, left no. it was like the because I told her about the money thing about like she, like getting the pictures and then she just like to watch her just like awkwardly go and like say nothing and oh, just like no. just oh, walk no. away it was just like oh no dear you <laughs> oh, no. So, yeah that was definitely pretty cringy um I I Oh, there was this really weird fight I saw in school once. It was pretty cringy yeah. where this dude, he just hit... <laughs> the reason they fought, I should start with this, is that the way that... You know GK was? Like, yeah. there, so there was, like, the classrooms here and the classrooms here, uh, the upstairs ones, yeah. so they could see each other's classrooms. Right. This kid came up to this other kid and started fighting him because he said that he was making faces at him and that he's not a bitch. <laughs> so he literally was like, I saw you making faces, dude. I'm not no bitch. And he was like what and yeah. then he just grabbed his backpack and just started doing this thing where he had his backpack and he was like trying to hit him but he like every time he swung he would like hit him with like his bicep he'd like, he'd like go to like hit him but he he kept, kept pulling him with his backpack oh, gotcha. so he'd go to like punch him and he'd pull him in and then he'd miss entirely so he was like just like hitting this kid like this with his fucking <laughs> arm and the other guy was just still trying to process what, what was, was happening. happening so he was still like holding his backpack straps it was just like getting hit like this and then this fucking math teacher comes running out of a class and I'm not kidding literally like shoulder checks the both of the kids into a locker and all three of them fall down Jesus. and like he hurt one of the kids pretty bad like the kid was like oh <laughs> like, like I, I think the kid like went like this way like against the locker and him so he just like folded oh, and was no. just like <laughs> Oh, no. It was the kid that was punching the other guy, so the guy that was, like, trying to... The kid who didn't know what was going on by the end of it was just still, like... What the fuck? Like, <laughs> I don't even know! I just got fought by a teacher and a kid. I don't know what's going on. And the other kid was, like... <laughs> oh, my dying. gosh. And he started the fight, so that was a pretty... I don't know if it's cringy, but it felt cringy because that guy, like... For sure, got embarrassed pretty yeah. hard. He tried started the fight for no reason. Right. Did nothing in the fight, and then got tackled by a teacher oh, and was like borderline crying because he was hurt so bad. Oh man. <laughs> yeah, that was that was up there. That's rough. That's rough. How about you? I was standing outside of a venue one time talking to a fan who I didn't know was a fan, mm -hmm. and he never mentioned that he knew who I was. Oh man. But he was just like talking to me, and it's it was just. You had to have been there. What a thing. But I'm talking to him. I don't remember his what he had said. He was just like, all right, man, I'll catch you later. 
Never uh -huh. said anything about knowing me. Turns around, like right, like in, it was weird how he did it. He definitely did this on purpose. He like turns around like in my face like this and he was wearing a snapback. <laughs> and it was my butt does it gent snapback. And he turns around, pauses, walks like four feet, turns back, looks at me and goes, points at the hat and then is like, and then walks away and I was just like, oh, <laughs> Dude, that was pretty uh, cringy. Damn, that's not even the story I thought you were gonna tell. That which one, one? Caught, caught me. Which one? I thought you were gonna tell the one with, when you went to see Post and the the dude like tricked you. Oh my god, that was pretty cringy. That was bad too. So yeah, we went to watch Post in Seattle, and I pulled up, and it's not really a place. I didn't know if it was a place you were supposed to park. There was no towing signs, but I parked there. This guy parked there too. I get out, kind of standing there. This guy comes up to me and says, are we allowed to park here? I said, I don't know. I'm probably gonna go in and find out. So he walks away. Comes, I'm still standing there like two minutes later. He comes back and he says, hey, I'm gonna go get some food. Uh, can I get your number? And like, when you find out, text me and let me know if I have to move my car so I don't get towed. And I was like, all right, innocent enough, sure. Gave him my number, went inside. Parking was fine, so I never contacted him. Two days later, I'm fucking shopping like at Target or something. I get a phone call on my phone and I'm like, what, who is this? And so I, I don't usually answer numbers I don't know, but for some reason I was like, sure, why not? So I answered it and I'm like, hello. And he's like, hey man, it's James. And I was like, James who? And he was like, James from the, uh, from the show. And I was like, I, I go to a lot of shows like, like, I'm sorry, I don't, I don't know who you are. And he was like, you remember uh, we parked next to each other and blah, 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 and, and you, you gave me my number in case the car needed to be towed? And I was like, yeah. yeah what, what do you, you want? want? <laughs> yeah, like, how can I help you? And he was like, well, I didn't want to say anything, but uh, I'm actually, like, a huge fan, and I just wanted to talk to you and, like, tell you some things, Ooh. and then proceeded to, like, tell me... All the things that, like, I mean, he was nice enough. He was, like, supportive of it. But the way you went about it. But the way, and then you. he literally tricked me. He was a fan that tricked me to get my phone number to then call me and have this conversation, which he called me after that, like, three or four times in the, in the next, like, two weeks. Damn. And I, I eventually just blocked his number because I was like, that's completely inappropriate. Yeah, like. And um, I was just like. It, uh, it just, like, you already yeah. tricked him and got the thing you wanted. And then yeah. he just kept pushing it. Like, oh, I, I did it. We're friends now. Like, it, it was so weird. Yeah, that's a line so you definitely weird. shouldn't cross with. That's fucked Yeah, up. so I don't give my number to anybody anymore. Yeah. Because I just don't trust it anymore. I it's mean, sad that you have to now. Like, yeah, it's it was. Yeah, that's definitely yeah. a cringy move to do. Yeah. Don't do that. Anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Hit the like button if you enjoyed it. Be sure to subscribe to see more videos. Check the links in the description below for our socials and shit like that. And we'll see you in the next video. When we do a video, we upload your comments. Do. Do. Uh.